like to welcome Sandy, Susan, Diane, and Rebecca for our first Tilda Swanson roundtable discussion. And thank you to everyone who is watching and welcome. How many people are watching us? We have people watching us. <laughs> I'd like to start with a brief artist introduction. So Diane Lingenfelter, if you'd like to say a few words about right. yourself. Okay. Ah. Yeah, uh, I'm an artist. I've been a painter for 50 years, although I'm only 52. <laughs> um, uh, I've always dealt with figure. I'm a real people watcher, love gesture, and I love reading people. And I've used it, but over the years I've simplified and uh, actually uh, abstracted more and more. And what I'm working on right now, and you got me just after I did something drastic. I'm working on two paintings. Do you want to know what they are? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or is that? Yeah. Okay. I opted to do uh, Johnny Rotten and Sid Vicious. And uh, I started on one, and it was going not too badly. But I don't want it literal or too academic. So that wasn't working. So I thought, well, I'll try it on another painting. And so I was working back and forth and I just went like a half an hour ago, went over the one and thought, yeah, I'm going for a walk because I couldn't deal with going back and forth. I think I had the, the feeling of it. And I think of them as um, fondly and as just kids. Oh, and, uh, love that. Yeah. Rebecca uh, Gordon. You're up. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so my name is Rebecca Gordon. Um, I live here in Collingwood. Um, I am kind of think of myself as self-taught, but at the same time, I did go to school and I worked years in graphic design. Um, but the way I think of art is it is a very soulful type of thing, and I try to push my limits and evolve constantly. So that uh yeah so i don't even i'd say very graphic i would say would be kind of my kind of description of my artwork but i do continually try to push my boundaries and i'm going to try even keep more doing so so yeah so it's kind of hard for me to self-define i guess okay uh susan lapp oh hi everyone my name is susan lapp and rebecca you and i kind of have a very similar similar uh style we'll call it a style of of ever evolving and never being able to stay in a box because for me my art is extremely um intuitive soulful my life goes into my art and if something happens well god knows my art changes and nobody recognizes me anymore <laughs> love it 20 years and which is last year and quickly, I started putting 20 years of art together. I've kept different pieces from different series and there it is exactly the same. But when people see me at a show and they say, you've changed again, why have you changed again? I haven't really, I've just changed my subject. And now I love figures also, but immersed in nature. And I'm also a musician, a flutist, pianist and composer and that those together are wonderful, wonderful things to do. So that's what I do. Thank you. And Sandy Waziak. Hi, I'm Sandy. And I've been painting. I was trying to do the math here while you guys kept saying how long you've been painting for. I think about 35 years, I guess. Um, and my work is figurative and stylized, uh, which I think really comes from my background of uh, illustration uh, so there's always stories there's always a story and really I think I just like to paint things that kind of don't make sense because <laughs> why not <laughs> you know because because we can <laughs> so there's lots of color they're always a little crazy and um, yeah but but honestly there's a lot of thought that goes into them too even though they seem really light there's usually 
some sort of story in there. Whether you need to know it or not doesn't really matter. Yeah. So that's what I do. And I'm in Hamilton. Love that. Love that. And uh, oh, I'm Sarah Filial, and I have the Matilda Swanson Gallery in Clarksburg, and I am very lucky to represent every one of these artists. Um, first question. COVID-19, the uh, number one topic on the planet right now. We're um, inundated with doom and gloom and lots of darkness and negativity. Um, we are all affected by it. We're struggling to navigate um, the current global situation. And what I want to hear from you is, how are you finding light? How are you finding creativity, uh, inspiration? How are you grounding yourselves uh, during, during this time? Whoever would like to start, go. I have an idea. <laughs> um, oh, I'm sorry. Hey, go ahead. Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, sure. I was just going to say for me, <laughs> Yeah, as strange as it sounds, but I probably live in my imagination like 95% of the time. So it, it is, does feel surreal and it doesn't feel, um, I feel like it's almost something that our brains can't really mm -hmm. uh, make into a normal, but I don't think we're supposed to at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so I think in a way it's kind of wakening things up and it's still an energy right the virus whatever it's an energy that's moving around i think it's changing the frequency and in a strange way for the better mm -hmm. like with a lot of there's the yin and the yang so unfortunately there's a lot of dark but is mm -hmm. a coming from living in my imagination a lot of my day um and always looking for the positivity and working at home so i have to challenge myself to be disciplined and and blah 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 which is always a challenge um yeah, I think it's what we make it individual. It's our own individual journey with the virus, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. With me, I try to write something every day. Not write, but I think we're really fortunate since we do have this uh, virus that we have telephones, we have computers, mm -hmm. we have cell phones. I mean, we we're lucky in this part of the world to be able to communicate and i find if i write something first in the morning like on facebook or something and there's certain people that i look for that have great humor um i tend toward dark <laughs> but that's me i like black too but um, um i think it's a, a learning curve too and uh but i think the routine thing is really important you know ah you have to do that get that done um it would be too easy to hey we'll take three months before we do this or that so i think i appreciate the practical things that we have to do day to day um to keep us uh, in order um, we're creatures of habit and uh routine and uh and painting certainly helps and because there's always problems in figuring out things um i think we're equipped <laughs> maybe uh, a little better than uh people who aren't artists i'm not sure that's about mm -hmm. it yeah. i i kind of agree with that and i've been talking to my you know artist friends about that and it's i think in some ways we find it not as hard or, or I don't find it hard because you're used to being at home working by yourself a lot of the time and it almost feels like okay now we're this is what we're supposed to be doing so let's just do it right um I don't I haven't I, I'm saying I don't find it hard but I guess it hasn't been that long um I feel like I have a ton of things creative things that I I can do and the same thing though with humor I'm always watching for those humorous those posts on Facebook and I'm always sending them to my mom <laughs> yes <laughs> you know um, because I don't know I mean what else can we do right now so and I'm just happy that 
in my case that uh, that everyone all my family's home here safe so that's a big one for me so yeah. i i yeah. feel okay about it right now no i agree with that you know so i'm in a very different situation i for some coincidentally moved to canmore alberta for six months and so i'm not in my home i'm not in my studio i don't have that sense of oh this is my day-to-day -day life i'm in the same house everything is the same rebecca again we're so similar it's surreal it is surreal for me because i'm in the most magnificent place on the planet with mountains everywhere and the scenery is incredible so my inspiration is just going wild but i can't paint yeah. and for me Probably too much on the brain overload yeah, it's not looking for humor for me. It's looking for, for all the poignant things about life. My family, my children, your friends, your family, you know, connecting with all those in a very different way. All of a sudden, everything feels so much more um, uh, compassionate and mm -hmm. loving and that there's no judgment anymore. So when you said the world might be changing for the better, you know, put away all those things, put away all those negativities, right? So we gather more as a human race to say, we, we, we have to do this together. And so when you're saying, how do I, how do I stay inspired and, and creative? Um, you know, I, I wrote a new piece, I called it COVID-19. It's kind of odd, but <laughs> you know, it's permeate. It's it's in my mind every every minute, just like all of us. I I never read Facebook. I live on Facebook now. I live on. I've read every CTV news and and today I said, I am not reading one more U.S. article. Mm. Not doing it anymore, because yeah. they're crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's compassion. It's still feeding your soul for writing and composing and painting, and that's how I'm dealing with it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I was just going to say, I think no matter how we all deal with it, we can't be hard on ourselves, how we deal with it. No. You know what I mean? Like when, yeah, like I say, Facebook and social media, I'll see so many people telling people how they should be doing with their kids. Mm -hmm. and I think it's so much just on our brains, period. Yeah. <laughs> no uh, judgment for anybody else. You don't know anybody else's lives or their no. health or their joys. Right. Nothing. Exactly. No judgment. Just compassion. Yeah. Just no judgment. Yeah. For everybody yeah. you ever see and meet. Yeah. And just registering, right? Like just registering this whole thing. You yeah. could just sit on the couch all day and just registering alone is a lot of work. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. has uh, brought up uh, the essentials and non-essentials in life and art, I believe, is being deemed as a non-essential. And I wholeheartedly disagree with that 100% because during any kind of, of uh, personal struggle, worldwide struggle, what do we all turn to? We turn to comedy, we turn to music, we turn to creativity, we turn to uh, dance, books, movies, it's all, it's all art or people start creating uh, things themselves. So it's, it's what helps art helps us heal. So we, we're artists are not on the front lines like the doctors, the grocery store workers, but we are the ones behind the scenes, so to speak, helping people remain happy and mentally healthy and um, keeping people connected and, and feeling understood uh, and stimulated. Art, art is community, and uh, I just wonder how, if, if you echo my sentiments, or if you feel like, yes, as artists, we should be stepping back, rather than saying, hey, we are still here, don't forget about us, because day to day, especially when people are hunkered down in their homes, art is what's helping everyone get through this, in, in my opinion and experience anyway. So, um, yeah, what, what do you girls think about that? <laughs> I'll let somebody else go first this time. <laughs> I did my first. I used it. <laughs> okay, well, how about last? Know. Goes first. Why not? <laughs> I I completely agree. I don't think that we should disappear. Look at history. 
for every war, for everything, there was always an artist painting reality, painting right society. It's artists who we who who keep that, who witness it, who experience it, who feel it more than so many other people. So we can't be in the background, even though most people think that we are. They, it's just. In another way, and I think of uh, discussions I've had with my husband about art, and uh, he is also an artist, is after the First World War, there was the anti-art movement, Marcel Duchamp, and, and anti-art, because art had been used a lot in religion, in churches, everything else, and there was kind of a belief that things would get better. The first World War kind of destroyed that. So they had anti-artists. So it changed the appearance of art. And not that it was a bad thing, but it was a reaction, which was quite valid. And I think it forced people to think about what they were doing. It wasn't just, oh, that painting or that figure really made me feel better, I can be inspired and do better. I think it uh, forced um, not only artists, but other people to think, hey, is what we're doing legitimate? It, are we doing enough or is this important? And I think that that question is always there. Well, may I say that I feel that artists carry the emotions for people who can't express themselves or they need an outlet to experience their emotions. And I think that artists give the people who aren't, the doctors, the, the everybody who isn't, mm -hmm. we, we give them an outlet to actually feel an emotion when they look at a painting or they see a piece of music or they're, you know, what are people doing in their homes now? They're crafting with their kids. They're painting. They're right. being creative. You have to use your hands. That's a, that's a, right? I think like, it's therapeutic. Yeah. Oh, and actually it's cool because I was trying to think who told me, but I can't, maybe it was you, Sarah. <laughs> someone was, someone, yeah, maybe. Um, is in the last year and they were saying that people that buy art, they'll buy art because it's something that they can't do. Yeah. So as you were just saying, for the doctors and nurses and all those people, you're balancing out their life and vice versa. Because they say you're providing something to the world, or we're providing stuff to the world that is just as much of a need, but in a different way that helps balance out those people that do those things. Oh, I'd have to ask Sarah what she thinks. Do people buy art because it gives them pleasure? or is it an investment? So I think there's really uh, different levels there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> yes, oh, for sure. yeah, I'm seeing quite a shift and I, I, I would like to attribute it to um, our, our neighbors down south and who was elected president several years ago. Um, you know, reality isn't, what it used to be it's not as thrilling or as positive because we're again inundated with with negativity and i've seen a, a shift for the the style styles in demand people are wanting uh they're not wanting high realism not not from us anyway and and they've moved uh they've shifted away from that into a more stylized or a, a more artistic perception of reality the, the they're looking for creativity. They're looking for to feel life and, and energy from the art. And, and it's a great shift to see that. Um, um, and uh, yeah, I wanted, I, I do want to attribute it to uh, our neighbors, dear neighbors down south for, for um, helping us as a society, uh, I think value more creativity than, than replication. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They were the first ones to have people like Franz Klein and de Kooning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. They did that before we did. And then we had the automatists. So. Mm -hmm. 
there's lots of color there. And I pay, hey, I'm an admirer of both schools. So maybe Sandy, we'll go back and forth. Sandy, um, is there anything you'd like to add? Well, just that I know that when I need to be lifted or, you know, some inspiration, I love to look at other people's art and or read a book that inspires me so i think yeah we do have our we do have our purpose to do that i think that to keep making art that i don't know and if you don't know if you're not an artist and you don't do that i would hope that by looking at art that that helps mm -hmm. helps other people too i know it does for me so yeah, yeah I, I think that yeah I, I, we're we just have to keep creating and it is therapy too i know that when i'm in a place where i'm just you know i'm sure you're all the same when you're stressed about something and if you can get yourself to create and sometimes it's hard but when you do it's like wow i'm so lucky i have this mm -hmm. so yeah i just think we just keep going if we can i mean and if it's a matter of just sitting and thinking about it it's still the same because it never goes away right mm -hmm. am i right yeah yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Jumping in again, I just have to say I, I'm so inspired by a book I'm reading right now. He's oh. also been my one of my favorite artists, a Canadian too, Michael Snow. He had such variety, really conceptual, but not in a um, removed way. If you really get into his work, it's wonderful. Anyways, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Susan, you touched on this uh, earlier, and it's 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 sort of a segue into art and politics. Um, I came across a quote by Adia Wahid: um, "Artists are political commentators," and you said it perfectly. How we see and feel and and hear the world on a different level, and that we our voices it's how we channel our voices is through our creation, our craft, whether it be dance or writing or painting, um, comedy, all of that, it's all art, it's music, it's all art. And um, the the relationship that art and politics has, they're, they're sort, of, sort of polar polar opposites and yet are so important together. And uh, Sandy and Rebecca, are, you both visited Australia and witnessed uh, some of the devastation and as a result you both um, cr created artwork uh, that was inspired by Australia and raised funds to send over there. Um, Susan and Diane, every single piece that you create there, there's always a hidden or more, um, not hidden, but a, a more deliberate message and uh, Sandy, you tapped into that in your introduction about stories, every piece, no matter how crazy or creative or colorful it is, there's always a message behind it. Um, yeah, art, art, art and its relationship with politics, what are, what are your thoughts on that? Other than cartooning, because it's fodder for that, but go ahead. <laughs> Um, politics can be a very broad term. <laughs> political, I said politics can be a very broad term. Yeah. <laughs> political cartoonists, yes, but the politics of art, music, books, history, you know. It's it's offering offering a voice for people who say may not have one and offering a different perspective, a perspective that is worldwide, it's it's nationwide it's it's perspectives from our backyard um you know and and off, yeah offering perspective and helping other people understand and also i think it people will read a book and think oh i feel this way right i'm not the only one so you're creating community uh, community mm -hmm. and connection that way and um uh, i think it helps people remain sane during during hardships and um, yeah, I'm just, because all of you have so, so many messages and Diane, you especially, and the irony behind every piece, I just, 
you know, you look at a painting and you think, oh, that's, that's a great piece. But then when you listen to the artist talk about why, why that line is there and, and Diane is so deliberate, everything, every line, every color is so deliberate and it, it's such a fascinating process and, and it's a story. Every painting has a story and and I just, I'm curious to see how politics plays into that and, and whether it's on a subconscious level or if it's conscious um, and, and how the art changes with the political climate. Mm, that's a good question. I don't think I think about politics when I paint. I don't, maybe I don't want to. I don't know. <laughs> it's an escape. You know I mean? I'm not sure. Maybe it's there somewhere. Maybe it's subconscious, but I think that I'm not thinking like okay i'm making this piece because of this and i think probably that's prob it's possibly avoidance at that time thinking about it because it's so crazy so i can't say for my work i don't know but don't you know. did kind of do that though with the the I, australia i absolutely did it with the australia pieces and and i guess i have to say that i was so I, I needed to do something, so I did, hmm. and and it was like something. I was it came it almost fell into my hands. It's like okay, you got to do this. You have to do yeah. this. So I guess you're right in that way, and and um, I didn't even have to think about it. So yeah, uh, yeah, I suppose I suppose I did. It was, it, I, and I guess then if it's something that's so heartfelt, and right now I just feel like everything's very surreal still. So it's hard to know what to do. Mm -hmm. um but yeah yeah no you're right Sarah I guess uh there was that element there for sure but yeah I don't know I don't know politics scary you're, if you're looking at a human disaster a human epidemic pandemic like now in a week it becomes politics so yeah. you know you're helping Australia because you have to and you don't think of it as politics mm -hmm but it is. Yes, it is. So yes, it is. Yeah, it always is, all right? Emotions yeah. that you're creating, they're feeling the politics. We're taking the emotions for them yes. and putting it out to the world. I mean, the, you know, COVID-19 is one big political, crazy, surreal yeah. to get the virus, right? Mm -hmm. So we are, I think that's why we feel that it's surreal. We're feeling everything. We're feeling the, the world, the humanity, um, politics. Oh. It's all one, so we're painting everything. So we are painting politics. Yeah, we just don't yeah, think you're it. right. Because we can't yeah. help it. No, because we can't help it. Yeah. So I'm thinking I don't. What am I painting? Johnny Rod and suspicious <laughs> anarchists. And why the hell they True. have a whole lot of damage? I did can't. But... <laughs> Sorry, I got off. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Though. I'm similar. Like, I never ever think of politics. Like, in a saying, if this does get out, I don't even vote. Like, I just figure I just don't want to put my energy towards it. Period. Um, with Australia, a it was the animals mm -hmm. from what I saw. So that's where my heart goes. Mm -hmm. Um, but as yeah, when I do it, it just feels like this very like. Re, like when I if I do something like that usually my artwork is not political or anything at all it's usually to do with the fundraising or something that's actually going to do something um I just it's almost like a reactive thing like I just come up with an idea <laughs> I do it and then keep my fingers crossed mm -hmm. but I always it's always for the better good I'm hoping because again I think the politics makes no matter what it is like COVID-19 the fires and the politics actually makes it messier mm -hmm. and more lies and more whatever so i don't know if it's a reactive thing that immediately i just want to bring light to it somehow yeah because if i think about it, yeah politics just messes everything up mm -hmm. in my in my brain yeah right. i i thought of you when i i came up with this question because of a conversation we had <laughs> <laughs> on my own ago. planet <laughs> a few weeks ago and how we had this idea of having started a new political party of, of that co is comprised of artists <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. Yeah. yeah and yeah. and um 
it's and and I asked I debated whether I should ask this question because artists we we all just kind of tend to shy away from politics and yeah what we do is is when it it touches our heart and our soul when it speaks to us we we take a stand right so yeah. it, it is a political stand it's yeah. the yeah it's been so so uh manipulated and and almost mm -hmm. destroyed right not pure it's yeah not and, and it's it, 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 the meaning has changed and and has a negative connotation to it but you know as i said we take it affects our heart and soul we have to decide we're doing we we take a stand you took a stand to to care for those animals that's a political standpoint right mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, rebecca what you're doing for the uh small businesses the self-employed you're doing another you're using your artwork and and raising funds for the businesses in our area that's another political stand yeah right as, as much as we'd like to it, it, it isn't. yeah no yeah, it is. for sure but i find that those are the things that actual pol politics i say politics as you said is very it's totally evolved over the years and i almost find um it's more drama now it's yeah. like live tv kind of like i don't yeah. even take it yeah. seriously like it's yeah. it's a gong show yeah say so i haven't watched the news i've watched it three times in the last two weeks and I don't I'm, I, I'm done with like it's it's so even what they say they don't teach me anything like it's just it's drama right and there I, I do find there's a lot of people that are even before the COVID-19 were create like we're in need of drama because everything's so structured like you know you take your kids to this you take your kids you're always told what to do and I do believe especially artists right now I in my heart think that the human race is create like craving creativity yeah right and things that are pure and real honesty because everything mm -hmm. is just is drama and which is fun you know like you know like the soap operas in the olden days and you know you'd watch it for maybe an hour but you wouldn't watch it 24 hours mm -hmm. right it does get boring after a while so i think when say like for the the australia or what i'm doing now I guess it is political, but I actually don't even see it as political. I just see it's something that just needs to be done if I want to see all these small businesses. Like to me, if I still, like if I personally, from a selfish point, still want to see small businesses that make my life colorful, then I have to be part of how they're going to survive. Yeah. Right? Where, so if that's political or not, I don't know if it needs a label maybe like maybe the whole political label needs to yeah because it's almost it's almost changed and gotten its own kind of feeling and everything that's just not what it was supposed to be it's not about leadership it's not about all the things that it really is supposed to be right but maybe the more we all kind of do our own collectively mm -hmm. that are led from the heart in a perfect world the color party it's <laughs> yeah, that's why I live in my imagination. <laughs> yeah, one big color party, exactly. Yeah. Color party. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, all four of you have partners that are very well. From what I can see, and because I've met them all, they're they're all very supportive of your your pursuits in art. And I don't mean supportive in a financial way. I mean supportive as they respect you, they respect your craft, they they want to see you succeed, and they believe in you. And you all have children. Some of you have grandchildren, and you know the the, the family role, and then the societal norms of why don't you go out and get a real job? Have you struggled with that? Those dynamics or have you paid attention to it at all does it affect your daily life maybe maybe it doesn't anymore so much but have especially having those supportive partners yeah really makes a, a big big difference it, that's a huge difference for me i think if i didn't have a supportive partner i wouldn't be doing this mm -hmm. i wouldn't be because it's it it is something that it doesn't bother me anymore it used to bother me because of you know, everyone you knew were doing nine to five and bringing obviously in more money and that now is always very hard, but I feel really lucky now. I feel really lucky that 
I have been able to do this and and because I teach too I can share that but um uh yeah I think I don't know about you guys but if I didn't have a supportive partner there's no way I could do this and and I don't mean financially although that certainly does help but um emotionally it would be really hard because if you don't have someone who believes in you right next door it's a tough game right it's tough anyway so um when someone's there saying yeah yeah you know keep going you're doing great it's great and my whole family is like that so i i feel really really lucky with that and i don't really care what anyone else thinks anymore so <laughs> It used to be, it used to be, more, you know, you felt like, well, you should be out there doing the nine to five job, but I don't feel like that anymore. You know, I've done a little of everything. Yes, my husband is an artist, and uh, we work totally differently, as Sarah knows. And uh, I think that is great because uh, when you look at art, you don't go, oh, that isn't what I do. You respect another way of working and you learn and there's certain principles that are the same in both um i i've been married twice and i've been really fortunate my first husband uh, was really supportive had three children and i work part-time and maybe some of you will know the store stevenson's paint and, <laughs> and uh um, I also taught uh, classes, you know, for six weeks, that kind of thing. What I loved about that was, was the, um, the variety of people. And uh, my very close friend, Vicki, and I, when we were working at Stevenson's and the people that came in and the things they said, <clears throat> uh, I have a book of cartoons, but I'm a little afraid to show the whole line people. Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah. So no, it's really important to have someone uh, supportive and someone who you can you respect enough to argue. Like I mean, oh, I I really hung in there for good old Marcel Duchamp. <laughs> and, like, <right? laughs> and so it's great to have someone who knows about art to discuss it with ad nauseum if you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it's really important. Uh, I, or, you know, if you're fortunate to have that. Otherwise, and your, your children are very supportive too. And, and Rhea, yeah. too. I mean, they, they, they love your light. They let your light shine. Yeah, no, they're great and a lot of fun. Support, yes, is a wonderful thing. Um, but I don't think I would ever have changed my life even if I was single and get a nine to five job. I did that once when I was 23 and it nearly killed me. And I said, I will never do it again. Anyway, my entire family are artists and musicians. And so it was just, it was normal for me. So I was lucky enough to raise a family and worked. I didn't paint then because for the first 30 years of my life, I've been a musician and that was accepted. I never thought this isn't what I'm supposed to do or should I get a job? Never. Mm -hmm. I'm also in my second marriage and my new partner is a very extremely supportive guy. Uh, but if he wasn't there, I wouldn't go get a nine to five job. I'd be an artist and be totally fine with that. So supports just that added bonus of luck and love because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i i told him if you'd like to know uh when we were just dating and i knew that he was you know sooner or later gonna get serious and i said to him never this is who i am i am never gonna get a job i am never going to get a job so <laughs> if you can if you can accept me that way i'm all nice. yours <laughs> Well, and he champions you too. He loves he loves it, which is so fantastic to see that. Yeah, yeah. Rebecca, you have a bit of a different different story. <laughs> Not yeah, with Keith. No. Keith is lovely. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, it's more Keith living with an artist. <laughs> 
think that's yeah. Um, yeah, no, he he's awesome. Um, when it comes to the art, obviously, nothing's always on the way up, kind of thing. Um, but yeah, no, he's always supportive with me, even when I in the last like few months, I'm like, well, maybe I should even just go waitress so it's flexible. And he's like, nope, keep going, keep going. So he he's really really um, supportive. He's actually artistic, so I don't know if it comes from him. At least somebody mm -hmm. is is doing it, and he wants to be around it. Um, it, yeah, I don't know. It seems to, it's not easy. Like, yeah, if I'm painting, there's sometimes a lot of time, or a lot of times, no dinner, <laughs> laundry's up to like. Yeah. It's probably worse than when I did work in my, you know, in my twenties. But that's part of it, right? You can't do it all. I actually had an artist message me today, and she was stressing because. She, you know nail her son's home from school and she can't work it but and I was like everybody challenges with balance like I don't think I think that's part of who we are right so it's but yeah if he didn't I mean I started doing art independently already having three kids and a husband so I'm gonna say that I have to have him <laughs> support me to do it um now but I, he does it by choice for sure which I'm very very fortunate to have that yeah, very fortunate. You, you were writing you did you had a writing career right a uh, graphics career and a fitness Perfect. career, right uh always graphics um it's more like graphics advertising print and then yeah. um and then i did fitness because i needed to do something to just kind of i say i've got that kind of split personality where I have to keep something going mm -hmm. positive and healthy <laughs> mm -hmm. um so yeah so I did that for years and then yeah and he's been supportive yeah yeah so yeah the, the gallery gallery artist transition or transaction it's kind of like a transaction the artist is in the studio working away creates the art brings it to the gallery they drop it off and then at some point or another they receive a check or they get the phone call or email, hey, come pick it up, right? Be being in the gallery day to day for me, I have the opportunity to see how everyone reacts to your reacts to your art and how they connect to it, how they respond to it. I'm curious from an artist's point of view, I, w I would assume that there it, there's a feeling of say like nakedness and uncertainty and insecurity that 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 develops when you drop the art off and there's sort of silence for a bit because you have no idea how people are reacting or connecting to your pieces when I see them I love them every day how how do you cope with that or or do you even think about that I mean you you you've all been painting for so long and do you still struggle with that insecurity and that violence until you get that check or or the hey come pick up your work <laughs> okay i'm looking for a quote right now from okay. warhol that totally goes to this you guys go ahead okay <laughs> um i don't feel that i'm insecure about that or worry that you know i'm waiting for that phone call sometimes i call you up and say hey how's it going what's the yeah. reaction and i think well if they don't then those aren't the right people for my art i don't negate myself or what i'm doing what's wonderful is as you say you're the gallery owner and you carry so many different artists work they all have their own style, their differences, their, their energy that comes off of the painting. And so we all know as artists that it's kind of like, the, you know, there's one person for every piece and, you know, they might not walk into the gallery for a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I describe it. I like to describe the art selling buying process as dating. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you have to wait till the right one comes along. <laughs> Sometimes I have to try a few paintings out, right? Live with it for a little bit. Then it, it ends up working for you or it doesn't. Oh, did we lose Rebecca? Oh, she's there. Oh, no. It's just, oh, come back, come back. My battery's dying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to plug it in, but I'm desperately trying to find this quote. Yeah, because I, I often, you know, Susan, I have these conversations with you and, and many of, of the artists as well. You know, I have the art in the gallery and then uh, 
on the app. How how are people responding? Are they okay? And is and are or is there something wrong with the piece? And really, people are loving it and and really responding well to it. They're affected by it. And but but it's the the check in the mail that is sort of the indicator in a way. Um, and I just wish that more artists can see people reacting to their artwork. Like Susan, you get it at the one of a kind show every time you do it, right? You see people, how they react to it. But if you're not doing those shows and you're just in your studio working um, mm -hmm. without knowing how people are receiving it, does that, do you think about that? I, Diane, do you, do you wonder about that at all? Yeah, I do. But I'll tell you, um, when I was going to our college, um, I started in the fine art department. I went to OCA when it was an art college, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, I was in the fine art department. I looked around and I can say it because it's all women here or they men listening. Nope, no men listening. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is so academic and boring. Like I can do that. And that's fine, and I, I appreciate that. But there was nothing new anyone was bringing, and they were old, and they liked their job, and they were going to stay there until they dropped dead. And I went, I don't want this. I want experimental art. So I went there, and I said, but I want one class in experimental and one in fine art. I juxtaposed all the classes. It was the best education I could get anyway. So I was used to um, seeing different kinds of art and different uh, viewpoints and different ways of making it. And <laughs> strangely enough, and this is the truth, there was a painting in one of the uh, painting classes. It was, I think, in Graham Coftree's class or whatever. Anyways, there was a painting at the back of the room, young girl, very painterly. It's hard to believe. I love this painting. It had to be eight by four. And it was a girl lying on her bed and cockroaches coming out of it. But it was beautifully done. So if you can kind of handle that. <laughs> and, oh, yes. And actually, Larry and I buy art. And uh, yeah. it's those pieces. So I think two important things that really help with that. And it might have, I might have veered off the point but is enjoy other art and mm -hmm. anything that we buy it's not like oh it looks just like mine no yeah. I don't be sure about it. and edit 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 because what if you die tomorrow oh god and your kids are going through oh, I really love mom do you want no you want no <laughs> a ton of stuff and I think it helps you go ahead as an artist editing is so well, i don't have a problem with whatever someone says and yeah. okay. <laughs> sandy would you like to uh add to that um yeah i think that um less and less um it bothers me if, if people don't respond to my work i think that i live in an area where i think most people here are landscape painters and sometimes that becomes a little difficult because they seem to do very well mm -hmm. and i'm not a landscape painter and i and, and certainly i love landscapes but it's not my thing and i think more and more i i just paint what i want to paint and i just hope that someone else can connect with it it's it, because that is very true to me whenever i sort of put myself in any type of box i know i don't like it and i'm fighting it mm -hmm. so i just have to keep reminding myself no just do just do what you do and um as i get older i think that more so i'm more comfortable with it and i just hope there's more people that connect to it and maybe can you know feel what i'm feeling or little bits of what i feel when i paint it so yeah i'd say it's, it's certainly it's hard and um but it's not like it's not like I'm making a ton of money anyway. So <laughs> it's not like if I change my style, things are going to be different. You know, I'm just going right. to do what I do. And you I'm won't be out on the street, will you? No. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. <laughs> I could make a house out of my paintings at home. <laughs> <laughs> That's an inspiration. We'll never be homeless. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Write a grant, quick. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh so gosh, that's funny. funny. Did you, did you find that quote, oh. Rebecca? I didn't, and I just saw it yesterday, but yeah, for, I have no idea where it is. But um, it was basically along the lines. Um, I had it yesterday because I want to do a painting in my studio. Um, he said, uh, people are going to either buy your art, they're not going to buy your art, or they're going to take time to think about your art. Whatever they're going to do, um, instead of worrying about it, spend that time painting. Right? They're going to do, uh, you have no control what they're going to do anyways. Um, yeah, and it's not easy because I think, well, I'm like, oh, well, maybe if I change my style and be, say, a little bit more, if I started landscapes or something. But then again, my my soul just won't do that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was basically spend that energy in painting yourself. And that's going to be more productive than worrying about if people are going to buy your. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I want to end this with the age old question of what inspires you? Other artists. <laughs> huge. Yeah, huge. That's huge. Other artists for sure. People. Nature. Mm -hmm. Animals. Mm -hmm. um, COVID 19. <laughs> <laughs> I can yeah. Get some coming out of this, right? yeah, yeah, I yeah. must, yeah, I, 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 you, I guess, yeah, for me, it's, it's just adapting and survival and finding, finding comedy and positivity and creating community wherever we can in whatever environment we're in, and, uh, yeah, people, color, artists, everything, there's, I think, for me, there's, I find inspiration in everything. Uh, if it's something good, if it's something bad, out of something bad always comes something better. Um, mm -hmm. I think inspiration is limitless. Um, I agree. My inspiration in the last five years probably has become more not, you know, nature and um, that, but really learning about myself mm, and yeah. me painting yeah. my insides I actually learn about myself from mm -hmm. what I create and then the inspiration goes outward because I find that people connect with them that one person mm -hmm. who loves that weird strange woman coming out then that's inspiring so I get validated mm -hmm. my crazy odd you know which we all paint our own styles but really it's just oh my god what am i going to learn about myself today look what happened why did that happen where did that come from that me mm -hmm. i'm inspired by learning about me mm -hmm. and then putting it out to everybody else who who can't do that you know yeah. like now everybody right okay this whole hour we've sort of been saying that the world covid19 politics you know everybody needs creativity no, actually, that creativity equals feeling their own emotions from creativity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's emotions, it's contact, it's community, but it's emotions that some people just, they can't let out. Mm -hmm. And art lets that out for them. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is why we are so important right now. We mm -hmm. are so important as artists. Okay, well, thank you girls for spending this hour with me and uh, everyone watching and answering these interesting questions and having a uh, real conversation and discussion about art and what goes on in the world. Thank you. Well, thank you for hosting. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Stay safe, everybody. Bye, sir. Bye. Stay safe. <laughs>